So, hello, welcome back to another episode of the self development Tactics podcast. I didn't actually know that I have to record today. I have everything set up, so everything is fine. But I thought that I actually have one episode, um, you know, spare, laying around somewhere. But I think I, I just either messed something up or just something else. I don't know. But here I am recording something. And today we're going to talk about breakups and breaking up. And there's actually a breakups subreddit, you know. Who would have thought about that, you know. <laughs> there's actually everything on Reddit, you know. Every single topic that people could be discussing about is on Reddit, which is actually pretty amazing because it is very helpful, I would say. And so um, I do not necessarily want to kind of answer questions because I am not the best when it comes to, you know, breakups. I've only had one, I've only had one relationship. Uh, well, hmm. I had two breakups quite, even though the first one was like, just, you know, I shouldn't mention it. You know, it, it, it was quite nothing. So I have reached a point in my life where if you want to ghost me, do it. If you want to break up with me, do it. If you want to walk out of my life, I'll take accountability of what I caused on my end and then happily open the door for you. A large part of me believes in the whole, your first relationship is the one you thought would last forever. Your second relationship is the one you truly learn hard lessons in. And your third relationship is one you truly, uh, I'm sorry, is your person. Perhaps the latter of the three there could be put up for debate, but I truly believe in the first two. I'm talking your first two serious, genuine relationships. Not flings, not hookups, not fuck buddies, none of that shit. I now know my worth to the fullest extent. I know the do's and don'ts. I've been through it all. I have learned significant lessons. I'm looking forward to my next adventure with the queen that blesses me. Am I in a hurry though? Nope. I'm not jumping into something. I'm doing me and enjoying just that. If you're in the same boat as me, keep up that attitude and way of life. You are going places. Let's actually see what people are saying. I came to this conclusion after two to three weeks of impending doom. Probably more lost of track time because too many things are happening in my life right now. I don't know if I'll be able to love someone else because until the very last second, I gave it everything I could at that point in time. Now I've made peace with the fact that people come and go in your life and sometimes you don't, ha blah, blah, blah. you don't have any say whatsoever, which is just the case, you know. So I'm going to keep enjoying myself, take each day as it comes and naturally get over the sudden hole in my life. If I meet someone, so be it. If I don't, what more can we do? Just keep living it up. Here's to growing and making new adventures. I think very important point. Um... Also, a very important point by the original post or the OP, um, you know, who just posted. Well, it's, it's not a question actually. It's like uh, him saying something. I guess it is him. I actually do not know. But what really helped me was objectively seeing things. And indeed, I've been talking to a friend about that yesterday. And. Um, if you see that you constantly think about your ex, if you constantly think about um, your ex um, having uh, just, you know, certain, I don't, is it intercourse? Is it the same? With somebody else, you'd probably know what I mean or what I'm referring to. Um, if you constantly have to think about that, if you constantly have to think about, you know, what, what she might be doing that you're not doing and you, you're alone and uh, she's already having another boyfriend and so on and so forth. The thing is, see yourself seeing it. See yourself thinking about that and, and be like, well, objectively, not subjectively and also not judgmentally. Well, okay, I am once again thinking about my ex. I am once again thinking about the person that once meant a lot to me. But now it is something different, you know. Now it, this person does not quote unquote belong to me anymore. There is no connection anymore. Of course, if you meet the person, you're probably gonna, well, depends on the relationship and how the breakup was. But you're probably gonna be able to talk to that person quite normally, and maybe also quite vividly. But in the end, it does not make any sense if you beat yourself up about things that you just can't control. You can't control that. 
you can't control this person. You can't control how this person feels about you. You know, you, you can't make this person feel good about whatever. So the thing is, objectively seeing it and seeing yourself thinking about it. Oh, this, this once again made me feel bad. Just realizing it, this really helped me. I don't necessarily know why, but me thinking, well, okay, you know, now I once again get into this kind of, um, you know, phase of, okay, it bothers me, you know, and I'm worrying about things. Okay, I'm seeing that I'm worrying about things. I see this phase. I see these emotions that I'm having. And um, by kind of taking a, a step back, by seeing this, the things from an outside perspective, more or less, it kind of makes it a bit easier to deal with it and at least accept it. I don't want to say that you should immediately, you know, at some point this, you know, probably should be done to some extent, but um, accepting it, not, not necessarily being thankful for it, not necessarily loving it, but just accepting it. Okay, this is how it is. I see that I'm beating myself up. Okay, now I'm beating myself up. And this kind of just gets you out of the mood. This gets you out of you yourself beating yourself up. I, at least it, it helped me and it worked for me. Um, also in just regarding different things and other things. Like, okay, now I'm angry. And this kind of just takes you a bit back and gives you space to think about why this is the case. You know, why you're feeling this way. Which is amazing, you know, because then you can solve this problem, then you can do something with it, and then you can work on it, you know. Which you can't necessarily do when you're so overly emotional about whatever happened or whatever is happening. I love your attitude on this. I do agree with you on the thoughts over first and second and third relationships. My third is my person, though we are not currently together. Which is a bit of a pity. Let's actually see what other people are saying here. Do feelings change fast? Many people say that feelings can change like every day. I mean, I remember my ex saying a week before the break, I would eventually break up telling me so many things like how grateful she was for having me and that she felt secure and happy to have someone like me in her life. I mean, I learned that uh, feelings can change and that you should see it in that way. In a week, a lot can happen, but we were together for two years almost. Anyone experience the same things? Edit. Um, in one week, many things happened, though she became cold and distanced for days, and I told her I would not message her again if she continued to, to do so because I was angry. I ignored her because... I'm sorry. I ignored her good morning message for two days, and she did not care. Eventually, I apologized for everything, but she did not care and broke up. Well, I, I do at first want to point out, and I do not want to be a, an asshole, you know, but I do not really think that quote unquote revenge and, and, you know, consciously kind of trying to make the other person feel bad about whatever, you know, whatever this person did, um, whatever it may be. I don't know. I don't necessarily think that this, you know, makes any sense. On the other hand, this could be just tied into the fact that apparently people like other people more that, you know, that do not necessarily belong to them. You know, people that make themselves scarce. And, and just, you know, valuable and whatnot by, you know, having a certain attitude, you know, and by, you know, texting back five days later because they, you know, have to do so many things and whatnot, which can be the case. Yeah, you know, I just don't want to um, say that everyone is bad consciously, quote unquote. But I don't know, like, I do not think that revenge is worth it. I do not think that it is necessary. And I also do not really think that this is um, worthwhile, you know, for both of you, like, I don't know, it costs time and energy, and in the end, it's probably only going to just lead to uh, more fights and more um, more problems, I'd say. Max told me like a week before the breakup that she wasn't leaving me. Two weeks later, uh, she stopped loving me and was with a new guy. I still don't understand this. There are two possible outcomes, or they are lying, or they do... So there are two possible outcomes. Either they are lying or uh, the feelings actually change pretty fast. I'll place my bet on lying. Maybe I'm a cynic, but I'm also an old lady who has been lied to a number of times. I think this is actually one of the most 
helpful comments, I would say, you know, people, elderly people that talk about things, you know, because when it comes to love, when it comes to relationships, you know, things really haven't changed much, at least at my point of view. And of course, the way we can talk to, to each other, these things have changed and probably also the, um, you know, just dynamics have changed. But, you know, in the end, people kind of stayed the same, almost. Anyway, uh, what does it say about a person if they move from one loving relationship straight into another? Um, well, I think this is actually quite healthy. I don't know. Like, well, unless you kind of skip the time where you should process things and, you know, should maybe also once again get to know yourself. But I think, I think it kind of makes sense. And I think it is actually quite easy to go from one loving relationship and actually a relatively serious relationship into the next because um, the person changes, you know, and if you can deal with it pretty fine, then, um, well, this is actually what changes. And everything quite stays the same, you know. You're still having your, you know, your rhythm probably like, okay, good morning and, you know, just have a good night rest or, or whatnot. And then also like just knowing that there's somebody for you knowing that you are there for somebody else and so on like i think it kind of makes sense it kind of makes sense that it that it is easy did he ever ever even love me well if he didn't or if she didn't then it is what it is and you can't change it of course it is not easy to think about that and it's not easy maybe to also realize that but in the end, you can't change it. In the end, it is what it is. In the end, it, this is, you can't change people. You can't influence people. You know, you, you, well, you, you can influence people, but you can't change like their opinion, what they do, and so on and so forth. I mean, you can only do your best. You can only do your best of being the best person you can be for a certain person, for a certain person that actually deserves it, the person that you love. You know, sometimes, of course, things do not work out as they, um, as, as you thought they would. And things just happen and breakups also happen. And hearts get broken. And it feels bad and it feels just really shitty. I know that. I really, really, really fucking know that. It's not a great feeling. But in the end, we can't change it. In the end, there are actually so many people, the chance that we're finding somebody else that loves us and, you know, we love them. It's actually pretty high, you know, it's it's not that of a bad chance or possibility or probability or whatnot. Anyway, uh, you ever get that itch to check their social media? Just a quick peek to see if they are doing anything, if they maybe show signs of missing you, that they're maybe just a little regretful, maybe a bit lonely. You block them everywhere, so maybe they posted something saying they are looking for you. I also don't think that blocking somebody is, is worthwhile. Uh, I understand it as some sort of a you know, reaction out of nowhere, like, okay, you know, explosively just doing something and, and then whatever. Like, I get that. Makes sense. Yeah. But in the end, I do not necessarily think, especially when the other person notices that, that it is worthwhile and sensical. I don't believe in this. I, I don't know. Maybe I just do not believe in... in, in uh, I don't know, in, in just trying to have conflict. I don't like conflict. I don't... I really dislike that. I guess. Sometimes I kind of feel like I do. But... Yeah, um, what I often think about is, you know, the, like, the fact that I'm doing a lot of social media and, and things are almost uh, getting posted every single day, you know, actually quite every single day unless I forget about it or um, some things happen, which, you know, has also happened. Um, I do wonder if people check out my stuff, you know, people that, you know, maybe know me, I don't necessarily think my ex is doing something like that. Don't think that it did. Yeah, no. At least not at this point of time, maybe once. But I don't really believe in that. The thing is, 
I'm actually quite open with things, you know, and, and uh, open about things. So it would be worthwhile, and I would understand because I'm talking about a lot of things concerning things. But anyway, uh, I'm still hopelessly in love with my ex, clinging on the hope we'll get back together. Help. Let's see what people are saying. I think about her probably every minute of the day. She chose to do this, so I have to move on. But I just feel broken and I don't even know who I am. I still love her so much, so the thought of being with someone else is horrible. But she has left me with a giant open and vulnerable heart. I want so badly to message and ring her, but I know this won't sort anything out. And this probably also isn't a good idea. I wouldn't do so. Out of experience, I can say, do not do it. Do not message her. You know, just move on. As bad as it is, and as as much as I can understand, you know, trying to, to you know, from time to time, figure out whether there's a little tiny spark of hope, you know, by messaging this person, seeing, well, if there's something going on, if there's going to be a certain reply, what's the reply is going to be, is there going to be a reply, and so on and so forth. Like, ideally understand that. And ideally understand why um why one would like to do so. Anyway. I still want to marry her, lol. I don't know how to move on or start my life up again. I just feel like a cold, empty shell. Nothing brings me happiness at the moment. Also, it was all my fault why we broke up, so I am in a cycle of blaming myself. I still have hope we'll get back together, which is probably the worst thing, because I feel like I'm stuck in this awful place. No idea how to get out. I fight impulses all the time to just get into my car and drive down to see her, but everyone is Everyone I ask if this is a good idea tells me it is a terrible idea. And yes, it is. She is the only person aside from my family who I was completely comfortable and myself around. And now, and myself around, and now that is gone. But just because one person was able to let you feel that way, it doesn't mean that nobody else is once again going to let you feel that way. Like, it doesn't mean anything, you know. Just because I've once eaten a hamburger doesn't mean that I'm never ever going to be able to eat a ha- to eat a hamburger. Like, no, you know. Often when we logically think about things, we realize like, ah, eh, does not make any sense. You know, why am I thinking that way? You know, doesn't make any singular sense. You know, it's just really useless, and it's also making you feel bad, or only making you feel bad. So. Why? But let's see, since there are a few comments, uh, what people are saying. I am in a similar, if not the same, shoes as you, but you must remember that outside of some very specific cases, it is not all your fault and that she chose to abandon all those moments you shared, those dreams you were building together, everything. Take a deep breath and imagine the last time you shared an incredible, intimate and sweet moment. Now let the reality swipe it away as you realize that she looked at it and chose to walk away. To share it with another person in the future. Well, I do want to point out. Of course, every single relationship, especially ones that, you know, that lasted for some time. And it also depends on the breakup and, and also just arguments and, and whatnot. Like, one should not only remember the good things. There were also bad things. But... um of course, you can focus on the bad things, which, you know, may actually make it easier to um, to move on. But but it really depends on the story that you're, to- that you're telling yourself, you know. I'm not telling myself the story of, you know, everything is bad and everything is shitty and, and, and whatnot. Like, I, I do not choose this um, in terms of people. You know, I, I really do not like that. I don't know why. Often I kind of also feel like that I... Uh, that I make myself believe that quite everybody is like really good or whatnot, you know, which is definitely not the case. But um, anyway, you have to snap out of it and continuously drill into your head that the hope is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Yes, hope is gone. And hoping for it or for her to come back it's also a pretty bad idea in terms of moving on because you reserve yourself for her 
or for him, you know, I do not should actually kind of objectively say that and not, uh, well, you know what I mean. Anyway, reserving yourself for somebody else does not make any sense. You know, it's only going to make things worse unless you know that this person is interested in you and that things are doing very, very well, then it makes sense, at least in my point of view. But talk to other people, you know, talk to new people, get to know new people. I mean, move on. Just move on. It's fine. It's gonna, gonna be good someday unless you keep hope up. It's actually one of the things that I did or do, having hope. But it is a really bad thing. This is also the reason why I pointed out so much. Because I've also seen that, you know, and it does that doesn't it doesn't yeah, doesn't make any sense as well, kind of. Of course, um, well, hmm, how should I say that? Just because you're losing hope, well, losing hope, you know, you, you're just you know kicking away hope, you know, you you want it to be away. Uh, doesn't mean that someday when everything's fine again that. You know, you can't meet this person. Doesn't mean that. You know? You kind of deconnect yourself from this person. This person is no more important than anybody else. Of course, he or she is. Because, you know, and, and I think this is also really fine. You know, to still, you know, feel about this person as a person that, well, meant something to you and, and still means something to you. But I mean something. I don't mean anything specific. I don't mean anything like whatever. No, just something. Okay, this this was a, po- a person of importance for me one day. And this is what it is. You know, and this is my history. This is my past. And this is what it is. I can't change my past. But I can change my future. And I can change my fucking present. And this is very important to um, to keep that in mind. Do it, um, I'm sorry, uh, that the hope is gone, it doesn't exist anymore. Unless she didn't think it through at all, it is very likely that the person you're imagining in your head simply doesn't exist any longer, at least not for you. Do it each and every day until you no longer have that massive dam stopping the flow of thoughts and emotions from helping you move on. It is absolutely imperative that you let go of it, one way or another, and to never give it to your impulses. I'm with you in this process, but it will get better, I promise. Yes. Move on. And I think it also makes sense to think through things, you know, think through the whole relationship with ups and downs and realize, you know, the reasons for the breakup, the reasons for things didn't work out anymore. Of course, you can learn from that. Of course, you can say, well, in the next relationship, I'm going to do it differently. I'm not going to stop it there because I knew that um, I could have done better. I could have done more. But um, of course, regret is maybe also going to be there. You know, thinking like, okay, could have done it differently. I should have done it differently. You know, and then now I wouldn't be as unhappy as I am right now. But first of all, who knows? Maybe if you had changed that, you would now just be in a coma because of whatever accident. Who knows, you know? You're living at this point in time. And this is great. Fucking great. You can do something with your life. You can just, you know, create something, can build something, can get to know other people. You can have intercourse with other people and so on and so forth. Like, amazing things are waiting. Amazing things are waiting. But... Live your life. And with that being said, I'm going to end the episode. So, 